I'm looking through some of my favourite games played by the 10th world champion Boris Spassky. We're looking at Spassky against Geller played in World Championship quarter-final match in 1968. This is spectacular. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us. So, 1968 quarter-final candidates match. Geller with black here. One of the great Soviet theoreticians knows his opening backwards and, well, influenced Spassky. Trained with Spassky, but also later on Karpov as well. Now, he would have been just booked up to the gills with some sharp opening preparation, probably picking the night off. And Spassky, very cleverly, just sidesteps with knight c3 and plays, played a close Sicilian. I should say Spassky had already employed this twice in the match and uh, had won two splendid games with this close Sicilian. I think it's very clever. It just sidesteps Geller's preparation. Spassky had used the close Sicilian previously, but only really dabbled with it. And I can imagine that Geller would have been expecting an open Sicilian. You know, that was very much in Spassky's style. You might well have seen another of the games, another of my videos, Spassky against Darga, where Spassky crushed Darga with really nice sacrifices in an open Sicilian. And that was, yeah, we've seen Spassky do that a lot. So slight surprise that he's playing this closed Sicilian, but it does keep a lot of tension in the position. Doesn't have a fantastic theoretical reputation, but I don't think that would have bothered Spassky at all. And he likes to advance his f-pawn. Well, you know, he's a fan of the King's Gambit. So probably he looked at this and thought, well, this is a really sound kind of a way to advance the f-pawn. At least he's, you know, he's not gambiting. Here, I think the best move for black is to play e6, but this is a matter of taste. And then put the knight on e7. Spassky faced this a lot later on in his career, actually. So instead, Geller plays knight to f6. Unpretentious development on the king's side. And both sides castle. And now simply rook b8 by Geller. Preparing to advance the b-pawn down the board. This is absolutely standard strategy in this opening. And Spassky... Starts advancing on the king side. B5, as advertised. And now A3. That just puts a stop, stop to things just for a moment. Black doesn't really want to have to recapture with the C pawn. Therefore, A5. And bishop E3 brings the bishop out. Gets some control over D4. B4. A takes b4, a takes b4, and the knight comes back to e2. So, uh, bishop b7 from Geller. The bishop could well be useful on the long diagonal, but he's basically preparing to shuffle across and contest the a-file. In this kind of position, really black wants to exchange pieces because... White is building up for an attack on the king side. So, you know, if, if black can exchange off, then that's good news. That'll really just lessen the effect of any attack on black's king. B3. In, in a previous game in the match, uh, which Spassky won, he'd actually played queen d2 instead of b3. And he managed to power his way through. Um, but b3 is an improvement and here is Spassky's idea. After rook a8, he just ducks the challenge, plays rook c1, which might look slightly odd to give up the a-file. But what he's doing is he's just making sure that c2 remains solidly protected. And that's uh, a kind of rock against the invasion of the black's rook on the second rank. And Spassky is hoping he can hold the queen side just long enough to attack on the king side. And that's exactly what happens. So after rook a2, 
G4, white kind of rolls slowly forward on the king's side. And here Geller played queen a8, which was criticised afterwards. Um, instead, queen a5 was recommended with a very quick move of the rook to the a-file and then actually trying to exchange off all the rooks to try and you know, lessen the effect of any attack. Well, possibly. I mean, I would say it's still in an incredibly complex position. So anyway, queen a8 played, and queen e1. So this, this strategy that Spassky is employing, which is basically to shift the queen over to the king side, you can see this in any weekend tournament in England. <laughs> um, this is just standard stuff. You can see it in Grand Prix attacks, where the pawn comes to f5, and then a bishop to h6, and a knight to g5. Um, yeah, it's a really crude attack, but it's extremely dangerous, as many players in England can attest. So, queen a6. Now, d5 was recommended. I mean, that's also really not so clear. Um, you know, white still has attacking chances there. But queen a6 was played. Now, got to be careful. Spassky just plays queen f2 here. If queen h4, which is what we'd like to play, just shift the queen over to the danger zone against the king, got to watch out. In this case, this rook sack is really dangerous. Attacks the rook, and the queen attacks the bishop simultaneously, so that is looking good for black. So instead, Spassky just marked time with queen f2. That keeps a little eye on c5 as well. Sometimes e5 can be good. And... You know, guards against d5 sometimes. Knight a7. This does turn out to be too slow. It's a nice manoeuvre because this black knight wants to come in here to attack c2. But it turns out to be too slow. f takes g6. Now, if f takes g6 in reply, then the knight comes to f4. And this is already very, very dangerous. Knight hopping in there. So Geller played h takes g6, which keeps a very nice pawn structure, but it does open things up on the king side, and the knight comes to g5. This is already really dangerous. Knight a3, the two black pieces attack c2. So we are reaching really the, the high point in the position where there is all this tension. Is black going to break through on the queen side before white breaks through? So already rook takes knight and queen h7 mate threatened. So that's why the rook shifts across to c8 just to give the king a little room. Rook takes knight anyway. So if bishop takes, then the queen comes down check and mate. So pawn takes rook. So white is now an exchange down. Queen h7 check, king f8. And here is the move that I'm sure Geller had underestimated. Knight takes f7. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So Spassky is sacking a whole rook here. Now, Geller took on c2. Let's just have a very quick look at what might happen if king takes knight then bishop h6 threatening queen takes bishop so the rook has to come across to defend and now knight f4 and this is actually a winning move so threat to take on g6 and then well you're going to win this bishop and then the attack just uh, crashes through um and if d5, which would help to protect this pawn, then in fact white plays e5, absolutely beautiful. And after pawn takes, knight takes d5 and rook f1 and, well, the combination of all these pieces, that's actually too much for black to bear. So that's the justification behind knight takes f7. So Geller instead took on c2. So this is still pretty critical. 
Now Spassky played bishop h6. Rook takes rook, knight takes rook. So even with just queen and minor pieces, in fact, this attack is too strong. If bishop takes bishop, knight takes. So threatening mate on f7. And if king e8, knight g8. Queen and knight, they are very well known as an absolutely deadly attacking duo. And this, this proves it here. Uh, let's go back. So knight takes rook just played. King takes knight. Queen takes g7 check. King e8. So if we count the material, well, white is the exchange down, but still needs to deliver the, 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 the fatal blow here. And actually, there are two ways to do it. e5 is a winning move. g5 was played in the game. This is decisive. So if that's taken, then bishop takes g5 and then queen e7 mate. Notice in all these variations how the black queen is so far offside, it simply can't contribute to the defence. You know, it's these little landmarks that might convince you that an attack is sound. So g5 has just been played by white. f5. Queen takes g6 check. King d7. Queen f7. King comes to c6, e takes f5, and at this moment, Geller resigned. Let's just see why. So that's a discovered check here. And if king b6, then in fact, white can exchange everything on b7. And very conveniently, there are two lovely passed pawns connected that can simply steam through. That's unstoppable. Um, I mean, what a crushing victory. Spassky really in his element there. And as I said, that was actually the third game that Spassky had won with the close Sicilian against Geller in this match. Must have been a real surprise for him, but clearly it suited Spassky's style very well indeed. And the close Sicilian became quite a weapon for Spassky in his later years. Thanks very much for watching.